It has been two months since our 11 Investigates team aired a three-night series on the 2011 Johnny Clark and Lisa Straub murders. But lead investigator Brian Duggar continues to push for answers. Tonight, he tells you about forensic technology that is cracking similar cases and about a big offer to help the county. A mother's terrified cry. My son is in the basement tied up of this house. I just saw him through the window. Oh my God. But the tape that tied the hands of Johnny Clark and Lisa Straub may be the key to determining who killed them in January 2011. A DNA report provided to the Lucas County Sheriff's Office on November 30th, 2011, gave investigators their first clues into who killed the young couple. The DNA of Samuel Williams was found on a cigarette. Williams proclaims his innocence, but he's serving life without a chance of parole. The reason that it's still considered open is um, there is evidence, there was evidence at the, the crime scene evidence that uh, left it so that this is still, there, there, there could be other people that were involved in this. The lab report is riddled with unknown DNA profiles found inside the home. Much of that was on the duct tape that was restraining Clark. For more than 10 years, that DNA has matched no one. Last week in Cleveland, the latest in DNA technology was in the spotlight. Bart Mercurio was identified by the use of genetic genealogy as the suspect in a 1999 rape. A genealogist working with family trees cracked the case. When we contacted the victim to tell her we know who attacked you, um, she was very happy. Cuyahoga County Prosecutor Michael O'Malley and Mary Weston launched a genetic genealogy unit in October 2020. The office submitted 20 samples of unknown sexual offenders to Texas lab gene by gene in January. Mercurio was the first arrest, but there are more coming. We have leads on at least two other uh, John Doe's. Um, we're hoping to confirm that very soon. Dr. Crystal Exley is a Bowling Green instructor and former DNA analyst. The up and coming, uh, really exciting technique that's being used in the forensic community is uh, genetic genealogy. It was used to nail Golden State serial killer Joseph James D'Angelo in 2018. Investigators matched DNA at crime scenes to profiles uploaded to ancestry databases by D'Angelo's relatives. If you know how much DNA a person shares with someone, you can kind of trace back where they should fit in the family tree. And then it's really just tracking down people and seeing, were you in the time and, and location when the crime happened? It also provides much more data than traditional PCR testing, which examines only a handful of genetic markers. Genetic analysis looks at hundreds of thousands. People who aren't in the FBI's database can now be outed by a genealogist. Either they've fallen through the cracks, they've been missed at arrest, or maybe they've just never been arrested and they've just been kind of hiding in plain sight. Now Toledo and Lucas County don't use this technology that often. Yes, they used it back in 2019 as part of the Baby Doe investigation, but it's something that simply hasn't been embraced. Now something unexpected happened after we aired our investigation back in late May. C.C. Moore, one of the world's best known genetic genealogists reached out to me and she says she wants to help. Working with her Virginia-based Parabon lab partners, Moore's team has helped solve more than 160 cold cases in the past three years, roughly one a week. Some of these cases are 30, 40 years old, even 50 years old. Uh, I've worked cases from before I was born and I'm just so happy to be able to help not only the families and surviving victims of, of these crimes, but also law enforcement. The murders of Johnny Clark and Lisa Straub bear an eerie similarity to Moore's first case. A young couple violently killed, duct taped the key evidence, but Moore helped close that 1987 murder in Snohomish County, Washington. She believes she can help Lucas County investigators. It's a case that uh, I really hope that there is DNA viable to be able to perform genetic genealogy because I'd love to be able to help provide answers to the families and really the whole community. 
Initial DNA testing can consume all of the original evidence, but a summary of that 2011 lab report made clear that samples were left for additional testing. There's been lots of cases that have had new life breathed into them from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And so if this case is much more recent than that, I think there's an even better chance that the DNA will be viable. Cleveland is proof that the technology works in solving cold cases. O'Malley says each case's office submits costs $4,000, but it's worth every single penny. And we have a, a victim of a sexual assault who knows that law enforcement continued to work and continue to use whatever tools evolved to try to solve her case. And I know she's very thankful and um, we've made our community safer by doing so. Back here live in the studio now with Brian Dogger. Brian, man, this investigation, it just continues to turn new leads. Where is the investigation going from here? Well, you know, Jeff, right now, if the county wants CC Moore to get involved in this investigation, they need to reach out to her. And I can tell you that CC Moore contacted the Sheriff's Department on Tuesday. And as far as I know, at this point, they have not gotten back to her. So the word going out to the county, but what about the families and hearing your report and the fact that she has, you said or she was talking about making uh, claims and solving cases even before she was born. So what do the families think about her getting involved? Absolutely. You know, I talked to both families, Jeff, and, and both of them are very excited about the possibility of, of Cece actually getting involved in this case. And I can tell you, I think they'd be very disappointed if the county chooses not to accept her help. What would be the reasons for the county not getting involved or having her get involved? Well, I mean, the most obvious reason would probably be the cost. It costs about $5,000 per case. But then you have to ask yourself, can you really put a price tag on bringing justice and solving this murder after 10 years? So. Just a reminder, if you want to see any of the investigative pieces that Brian has done as far as the Johnny Clark and Lisa Straub murders from 2011 are concerned, you can check out the WTOL 11 YouTube page. Brian, as always, thank you. Sure.